Introducing revision 1.1 of my electric tricycle project. I went to Home Depot and I picked up this toolbox for $8. It holds my lithium battery packs and the motor controller quite well. And it's just some packing foam just to keep it snug and in place. I also added some heat shrink cable to one of the balance leads just to make it a little easier to handle and more rigid. Because I was having some issues of the wires not being very tight on there. Just didn't want to hurt it. So it's made it really nice and clean. I've, I was able to take off the styrofoam around each battery so it saved a lot of space. And now I have all this other part of the basket to put stuff in. And today I actually had a lot of stuff like I had a pizza box and I had a big toolbox that I just bought filled with stuff. And that fit all really nicely because I also have these bungee cords that I can use to hook stuff down. This toolbox is actually connected with two U-bolts with a piece of wood going underneath it to make it a big enough thing to go around. I just stuck the wood underneath it and then put around it. Because otherwise, this, these wires, the, actually these, these rods, are too thin to have a U-bolt hold it up very much because the curvature of the U-bolt goes around the wire. But that was a simple fix. I just grabbed some of the, like the, the decorative wood chips that they have on the ground in some places. It's kind of stealing, but whatever. Anyway, so that's in there nice and tight, and I'm enjoying revision 1.1. Today I went to Halted Electronics Store and I bought some more things. I've actually been buying several things, but I'll, I'll just say it as if I bought it all today. These are, like, these are like video clips from the past like week or so. Bought a bunch of stuff, and well, let's go inside and see what see what those are, because those are for revision 1.2 of the electric tricycle. So first off, I just ran out like half hour ago to pick up this 20 foot extension cable, some colorful zip ties, which I couldn't resist. And when I came back, I went to go change the, the garage uh, light bulb for my landlord and happened to see that these batteries were laying next to his recycling batteries. And I asked him about them and he said I could have them. So I have some lithium batteries now. That's pretty cool. You can use those for stuff. I'll strip those open. But I got this today. It is a technician's case. I got it at Home Depot. It was a little pricey, almost $40, but I think it's going to be worth it. Now inside of it I have some tools and stuff I picked up. The tools and whatever you've seen from the last videos. Inside of here is some components I picked up at Halted. Some knobs. Some capacitors so I can recap that power supply that I'm trying to power my IMX B6 with. Another big capacitor. And a bunch of assorted LED displays, which are pretty cool. I couldn't pass them up. Just random LEDs. There's a square LED here. I couldn't pass that up either. It's 10 cents a piece. Then also at Halset, I picked up. A 40 watt soldering iron. I have to test that out, see how well that was. It has a big chunky tip on the end, so that'll be good for soldering big things. Then today, when I went to halt it, I picked up this. First off is a Maxter hard drive from 1988 that holds 200 megabytes of memory. It's one dollar. Couldn't pass it up. It was just sitting in like their random junk drawer. It says untested on the front. Probably goes to a IBM AT as it says AT on it. Don't know. Either way, I'm going to test that out someday. It'll be kind of cool. 
Either way, it's just a neat hard drive to have. And then I got this. This is 115 or 120 volts in. And let's see, I think 36 to 56 volts out. So basically, I can use this as an onboard charging circuit for my electric tricycle. I use the extension cord I just bought to feed power into it. Oh shit, I just realized there's a capacitor that's bent up on there. Looks like it's been hit like that. Oh, well, it's just a single capacitor. I can always fix that. This was $32. A little bit pricey, but to be honest, that's actually not that bad for this part. I really looked around a lot in all their power transformers to find a good deal, and I think I found an okay deal. As you can see, it's rated for 36 to 56 volts DC, output at least. 4.17 amps without a fan, 5.55 amps with a fan. So this is some pretty good charging power here. I also picked up some of these little connectors so I can have 110 volt AC coming in and I can have the DC coming out. Yeah, I always should leave, it out, leave that on there. Basically this half is positive, or no, this half is negative and this half is positive. So you can just tap into any one of those you want. Then I think this is just for like little meters and optional stuff. And you adjust the voltage by adjusting that, I think. Judging by the data sheet, I think it says that it has over voltage, over current, and over temperature safety stuff in it. So it won't overheat too much, or at least it'll shut off before it overheats, gets over voltage, or gets has too much current pulled through it. So that's pretty awesome. It's going to be a great addition to my electric tricycle. I'm just going to get a, like a box to put around it, maybe like a fan to blow air through it. I'm thinking I can probably get an aluminium project box and I can just have that as like a giant heat sink and push air through it. That'd be pretty cool. I've also been tinkering with 3D printing. A friend of mine has a DaVinci XYZ 3D printer and I've been printing stuff. This is the 3D character model for my character, Renoa Leonhardt from Final Fantasy XIV. That's where I get the name. Actually, that's the first time on YouTube I've ever said Renoa. So that's kind of interesting. Before that, I've just never said my name. Anyway. So I, I ripped this 3D model from video memory while I was playing the game. Actually, it was on a loading screen. Then I imported it. I saved it as an STL in Blender. And then I... I think, I think STL is st uh, stereolithography. I can't remember. But either way, then I... It had some issues with the mesh. So I put it through a web service called MeshFab, which fixed some of the errors. Then I put it back into the... DaVinci XYZ slicing program, sliced it, and printed it. I actually printed it in three parts. Printed the legs up into the, bo uh, the bottom of the robe, printed the robe by itself, and then printed the head by itself. Which now I found after I, I could use MeshFab or net NetFab or... Yeah, NetFab. That's what it is. NetFab. I was able to just print the entire thing. So if I ever do it again, I'll print the entire thing. Because it didn't mess up just a little bit. Like on the bottom of the hood, the tail, so like that. But oh well. Still, this is pretty awesome that I can turn a 3D model into like an action figure type thing. Well, this is just a quick little video talking about some stuff I got and showing off the version 1.1 of my electric tricycle and talking about what 1.2 will be like. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!